and Mari, welcome to my class. So today we are going to learn about how to write on the other structures of monosaccharides by using Fisher's cross action formula. Okay, so now we are going to write down the open chain structures of the monosaccharides. Okay, so let's start. So while we are writing down the structures of aldoses, we have already discussed that glyceraldehyde, the glyceraldehyde is taken as the reference carbohydrate. Let's know why we are calling it as a reference carbohydrate. So glyceraldehyde which contains three carbon atoms and this is the basic monosaccharide unit. Okay, so here it contains aldehyde group as the functional group and other end it contains primary carbon atom. And in the middle one, this is the chiral carbon atom. Glyceraldehyde contains one chiral carbon atom. So we all know what is chiral carbon atom. Chiral carbon is the one which is attached to four different atoms or groups which is also called asymmetric carbon, okay? So while we are writing down the D forms of monosaccharides, we take D glyceraldehyde as the reference carbohydrate. So for D forms, we can see the chiral carbon which is farthest from the functional group contains OH on the right side and H on the left side. So by taking this as the reference, as the example, we are going to write down the remaining monosaccharides, remaining aldoses. Okay, let's write. So, this is aldotriose, which contains aldehyde as the functional group and contains three carbon atoms. One, two, three. Okay, next one, aldotetrosis. So, these compounds, they contain aldehyde as the functional group and four carbon atoms. One, two, three, four. The last one will be the primary carbon atom. Here, we have already discussed that the chiral carbon atom which is farthest from the functional group must contain OH on the right side like the glyceraldehyde. So you have OH on the right side, H on the left side. The same thing here also the carbon which is farthest from functional group must contain OH on the right side and H on the left side. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So it is compound containing four carbon atoms and the next one the first compound must contain OH on the right here it must contain OH on the left so don't get confused here we are not writing down the L forms how to know uh, that the compound is a D form means it is by looking at the chiral carbon which is farthest from the functional group we can know whether the compound is a D form or an L form okay Even OH is on the right side. So here we are just using some tips to remember how to write down the structures. Okay. So all these compounds are D forms only. So the first one, the first compound, we must write OH on the right side and OH on the left side. So its name is D erythrose. And its name is D triose. So here we can see the number of chiral carbon atoms are 2, 1 and 2. Here also which contains 2 chiral carbon atoms or asymmetric carbons and these two are examples of aldotetrosis. Okay? In the next aldopentosis. Even here also the same thing. So for all these compounds we are taking D is right as the reference carbon reference carbohydrate so it must contain OH on the right OH on the right H on the left so all these are D forms D forms of aldopentosis okay so here we can write down by using this. Here we have these two are the derivatives of this compound. So we can use this structure. So the farthest one is completed and the next one OH on the right side, H on the left side. Since this, this compound is also derived from this, OH on the right, H on the left. And for the next carbon, we have to take the previous one. So since from this compound, these two are derived only for structural Configuration we are using these as the reference compounds. Okay, 
Since this compound is derived from this one, we can take this carbon OH on the right side for these two. So one more carbon is left. For this, for the first compound, we have to write down OH on the right, H on the left. Here OH on the left and H on the right. Okay. So this contains three chiral centers. The next one. These two are the derivatives of D three O's. So we have already written down the last farthest one. So the before one, it contains <coughs> H on the right side, O H on the left side. Same here, H on the right side, O H on the left side. Again in this, one more carbon is left. So for the first compound, O H must be on the right side and H on the left side. Here H on the right side, O H must be on the left side. So here these compounds also they contain three chiral centers. Okay, and uh, let us know the names names of these compounds. This is D ribose. Right to right. This is D ribose. And this is D carabinose. And this is D xylose. And this is D lixos. All these are D forms. So since these compounds they contain five carbon atoms and aldehyde as a functional group, these are the examples of aldopentoses. Okay. Next coming to aldohexoses. So these two compounds they are derived from ribose. So here also by taking this as the reference. The farthest carbon must contain OH on the right. OH on the right. So just for give me a note. Okay. So these are the D forms. And since these two compounds are derived from D ribose, let's use ribose as the example. Okay, farthest one is D form, so these two, OH on the right, H on the left, OH on the right, H on the left. This compound is also derived from D ribose, so this one OH on the right, H on the left. Next, this carbon OH on the right, H on the left. One more chiral center is free now, so for the first compound, OH must be on the right, H on the left, H on the right and OH on the left. Okay, next. These two are the derivatives of D arabinose. So by using this as the example, let us write down the structure OH. H, H, OH. Same here, OH, H. H O H. So the first compound must contain O H on the right, H on the left. Here H on the right, O H on the left. Next, these two are derived from D xylose. So this one H on the right, O H on the left. Next, O H on the right, H on the left. Same thing. H on the right, OH on the left. Next, OH on the right, H on the left. The first compound must contain OH on the right and H on the left. Here, H on the right, OH on the left. Next, these two are derived from the lexos. So, this one, H on the right, OH on the left. Next, H on the right, OH on the left. Same thing here, H on the right. So the first compound must contain OH on the right, H on the left. Here H on the right, OH on the left. And all the aldohexoses uh, contain four chiral centers. Okay? 
one, two, three, four, four chiral centers. And let's give their names. Our uh, uh, derivatives of D ribose, D allos. This is D allos. Then D altos. Next D glucose. Then D mannose. Then D. So D glucose and D mannose are derivatives of D arabinose. And then the derivatives of D xylose are D gulose and D aldose. And next the derivatives of D lixose are D galactose and D calose. So these uh, aldo, aldo hexoses they contain four chiral centers and among all these the most prominent ones are D glucose, D mannose and D galactose. Coming to aldo pentoses, ribose and arabinose, xylose, these, these three compounds are more prominent and coming to aldo tetroses, erythrose is more prominent and uh, glycerol is also the most prominent one. Okay, so these are the structures, open chain structures of aldoses by using facial projection formula. So now let's write down the structures of ketoses. Okay. So in uh, ketosis, ketosis is the starting form that is with a compound, compound with three carbon atoms is dihydroxy acetone. So ketosis, if you observe the structures of ketosis, the first carbon and the last carbon, they contain primary alcohol as their groups. Okay, and the functional carbon, functional group is ketone, that is C double bond O at second carbon, at second position. And this dihydroxy acetone, which doesn't contain any chiral centers, like in the case of aldotriosis, glyceraldehyde, which contains one asymmetric center, but dihydroxy acetone, which is ketotriose, which doesn't contain any chiral centers. Okay, and the next derivative of dihydroxy acetone is four carbon keto tetrose. So here, ketone is the functional group and which contains four carbon atoms, so it is the example of keto tetrose. Now let's write down, since these are D forms, we remember that the farthest carbon must contain OH on the right side and H on the left side. So it is D erythrulose. Okay, D erythrulose. From D erythrulose, we have two derivatives. So which contain five carbon atoms, ketone as a functional group. And here if you observe the chiral centers, D erythrulose, which contains one chiral center. So this is one group, another one, another one, and another one. So all the groups that are attached to this carbon are totally different. So it is a chiral center. Erythrulose contains one chiral center. Coming to aldo tetrosis, erythrose and triose they contain two chiral centers each. But here in case of keto tetrosis, erythrulose contains only one chiral center. Okay, next the derivatives are the farthest one must contain OH on the right side, H on the left side. And the first compound, it, it must contain OH on the right side and H on the left side. You are also OH on the left side, H on the right side. Okay, coming to chiral centers, 1, 2. Here, 1, 2. So, I'll do pentosis. They contain all, sorry, it's not all do. Keto pentosis, they contain two chiral center. But coming to uh, aldo, um, aldo pentosis, they contain three chiral centers. Okay, let's write down their names. The erythrulose, the derivatives are D ribulose and D xylulose. And the derivatives of D ribulose are keto hexoses containing ketone as the functional group and six carbon atoms. So these are the examples of keto hexoses. And the farthest carbon must contain OH on the right side, H on the left side. Okay. 
So by using this carbon, let's write down the remaining structure. So farthest one is over, next OH on the right side, H on the left side. Since this is also its derivative, OH on the right, H on the left. Next one, we here it has one more chiral center. So the first compound must contain OH on the right, H on the left. Coming to the next one, H on the right side, OH on the left side. Okay. Here, these two are the derivatives of xylulose. So, the farthest carbon must contain OH on the right, H on the left. See, since we are writing down the D forms of monosaccharides, the farthest carbon must contain OH on the right side. But if we are writing down the L forms, OH must be on the left side and hydrogen must be on the right side. Okay? And here also this is the farthest one. And by using this, let's write down the structure. H on the right, OH on the left. Here also H on the right, OH on the left. The first compound must contain OH on the right. Here H on the right. Coming to number of chiral centers, 1, 2, 3. Keto hexosis contain 3 chiral centers. Coming to aldo hexosis, they contain 4 chiral centers. Okay. And their names are D psychos, D fructose, D sorbose, and the D tegatose. So these are keto exoses. So we have D fructose is the most prominent one. Your D reticulose and D xylulose are most prominent. And D reticulose is also most prominent. Keto tetrose. <coughs> so all these are the open chain structures of monosaccharides that we have written down by using pressure projection form. Hope you all understood. If you have any questions, please mention them in the comment section. Thank you.